the 69 year history of the competition featuring 32 teams. Now 16 teams still in contention for the gold medal while 16 other teams are in the classifiers to determine standings from number 17 to number 32 with invitations to the four Olympic qualifying tournaments at stake. We are in Foshan and tonight it's unbeaten Argentina versus Venezuela. Dean Quinito Henson with Josh Bett. This is the 2019 FIBA World Cup, the World's Cup game. Josh, Argentina, plus 47 point differential in the first round. Averaging 86 points, giving up 73, 70.3 points a game. Four players averaging double figures. They're looking sharp. Well, no doubt about it. I mean, Argentina is a world powerhouse, an icon, a titan of world basketball, if you like. But make no mistake about it, Dean. Venezuela are a team that mean business. A lot of these players play for Guaros de Lara and Liga de las Americas, and they're going to be led by an inspirational player, and that's in Heiser Quillens. Venezuela 2-1 record, plus 18 point differential, and they're coming up back-to-back -back wins over the Ivory Coast 87-71 and over host China 72 to 59. Venezuela averaging 76 points in this competition and giving up 70 points a game. And their big man, their big scorer, not exactly a big man, he's a big little man and he is Guigent and uh, what a game he's been playing so far here in this competition, averaging 16 points, 7.7 assists a game. But we, before we talk more about Guigent, this is the Argentinian team, and one by one, they will be introduced. We all know the rich basketball history of Argentina. They won the gold medal in the Olympics back in 2004. And they won the first ever World Cup championship in 1950. And they also won a silver medal in the World Cup in 2002. Well, they came fourth place in the World Cup in 2006, of course, and that was against the USA after the USA beat Greece. Luis Scola was a member of that team. But if you look at a lot of these players, a lot of them with a wealth of experience in obviously Europe, and some of them actually playing in South America. If you take Marcos Delia, just coming off the back of a very good season with Ucam Murcia, has just moved on to Mexico. You mentioned Luis Scola, 39 years old, but still getting the job done. He's averaging 17 points in this competition and nine rebounds. Average age of Argentina, 26.6. And the first game of our doubleheader today, Poland beating Russia 79 to 74. Poland keeping its unbeaten streak intact. They're now up to four and zero with a carryover system in effect here in the second round. We take a look at the leaderboard, Poland at four and oh, Argentina, the unbeaten team, three and oh, Russia two and two, Venezuela two and one, and momentarily, we will be honoring the national anthems of our competing countries tonight.
This is the third meeting between these two Latin American titans. In the first meeting in 2002 World Cup, Argentina won over Venezuela 107 to 72. And then in the second World Cup meeting between these two teams, Argentina repeated 96 to 54. Both those games were blowout wins for Argentina. Will we see another blowout win here or will Venezuela come, come on strong against Argentina? Well, no doubt about it. Now we get to set to introduce our officials tonight, as we can see. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very proud of the officials we have here at the FIBA World Cup. We've got Johan Rosso, Matthew Albert Myers, and Evgeny Mikheyev coming from Kazakhstan, the United States, and of course France. And ladies and gentlemen, our officials have done an excellent job in all of our competitions, and they'll continue to do so here tonight at the FIBA World Cup in Foshan. Well, Dean, we get set to look at the starting lineups tonight. We're going to start off with Venezuela. And we've got Josef Vargas, Miguel Ruiz, Gijent, Dwight Lewis, their naturalized player and Nestor Colmenares. And Gijan has just been brilliant in this competition so far. We were mentioning about his stats earlier on. And Gijan averaging uh, 16 points, 2.7 rebounds, 7.7 7 assists. As you see his numbers flashed on your screens. Gijan is six feet tall, one meter 83. Unbelievable performance for him, but he'll be matched up against Campaso of Argentina. That'll be a matchup to watch. As you take a look at the Argentine starting five, Vildoza, Scola, Campaso, Marcos Delia, and Patricio Garrido. And we talked about Campaso and how big he has been for Argentina in this competition so far. He's averaging 15.3 points and seven assists a game. But the man of the hour, for Argentina has to be this man, Luis Scola. You don't see the long dresses any longer. He's cut his hair short, averaging 17 points, nine rebounds. So he's not like Samson. He got a haircut, but his strength is still there. <laughs> no doubt about it. You know, go back to Isaac Yen, of course. He was doing that all season for Guaras de Lara and Liga de las Americas, and he led them to a Final Four, only not there to lose to San Lorenzo de Amaro, who used to be the team of Gabriel Deck. Now, Gabriel Deck was a 2017-18 MVP of Liga de las Americas. These players, they know all about each other. Argentina know about Guillen, and of course, Venezuela know all about Scola, of course, but they know about Gabriel Deck. This is going to be a clash of two big titans of South America. What about the Battle of the Wits? Sergio Hernandez of Argentina, and then Venezuela with an Argentinian coach, Fernando Duro. That's going to be interesting how an Argentinian who's coaching Venezuela will be going up against his own country. Well, no doubt about it. I mean, look, when you come from Argentina, you know your basketball. You're brought up in one of the meccas of South American basketball. And on top of that, this is where he can now show to his country that he's away and that he's making things happen in Venezuela. Now remember, he's also the coach of Guaras de Lara. So he did very well this year by taking him to the semifinals. And for Argentina, what a run so far here in the World Cup. They've actually won the first four games in three of their last four World Cups, so they're looking to make it another four-win streak starting this World Cup. And you see Luis Scola checking in, wearing number four. And the rest of the Argentinian starters. Marcos Delia. Garino is on the floor. Number seven player is Campaso. We're expecting a beautiful matchup between Campaso and Guillén. Number 14 player for Venezuela, Miguel Ruiz. Vildosa is also there for Argentina. As you see, Fernando Duro, the Argentine coach of Venezuela. Well, Vildosa now won the Liga de las Americas for San Lorenzo de Magro, back-to-back championships for the Argentine Giants. So again, he would have played against Isaac Yent, he would have played against Nesta Colmenares and the Vargas brothers. So this is going to be literally a battle of giants. Now we talked about the matchup between Campaso and Guillén. What about the matchup between Colmenares and Scola? 
Well, Komenares is going to have to play very physical basketball because what he doesn't have is what Luis Scola has, the technical ability around the basket. Nessa Komenares is going to have to use his athleticism and his youth to get past this one. Delia and Ruiz jumping it up. Argentina with the first possession. And there's Campasso. You know that he can distribute. You know that he can shoot. He gets everyone working together for Argentina, and that's the first foul called against Venezuela on the drive by Campaso. Well, Heisler Guillen there just getting caught off the man-to-man -man defense. Campaso just went right by him. Now, Heisler Guillen, as great a shooter as he is, he's not the greatest man-to-man -man defender. And what they can't afford is him to get the early foul trouble. Campaso with the inbound. Finding Bildosa. Bildosa still with the basketball. Scola on the outside. It's over to Campaso. Scola getting the pass. A beautiful one coming from Campaso. And an unmolested two points from Luis Scola. What a perfect pass. Well, that's just too easy for Luis Scola. Look how much time and space he had the ball at the high post there and just went in with a finger roll. Venezuela have to be more physical in defense. Colmenares blocked. The ball kept alive. Ball still with Venezuela. The outside shot not falling inside. Big offensive rebound by Colmenares, and he will miss inside. Ball is loose. Venezuela still has it. There's Dwight Lewis. Over to Vargas. Looking for a friend. Now Guillen. Guillen with the basketball. And that quickness. Unbelievable quickness. And it's a two-pointer for Guillen. Running around Luis Scola. Scola not able to keep in step with a quick stepping Guillen. Bildosa from the outside, not there. Rebound by Guillen. He's got the ball. Over to Vargas. Well, Vargas is... defended by Garino. Colmenares has it. This is where Venezuela got to be more clinical. They got to make sharper decisions. Now you can see Heiser Guillen just trying to get into space and areas, but now they got to attack the basket with a bit more physicality. Oh, yes. Dwight Lewis ringing the bell from the medium range. Hitting the shot over Vildoza. Vildoza has possession. And a contact right there. A foul will be called. And it might be against Garrido. So now two team fouls against Argentina. Argentina making sure. Rather Venezuela making sure. And oh, a pass from the inbound. Stolen by Venezuela. Delia with the basketball. Bildosa now on the attack. Campaso. There's a set shot. Nothing there coming from Garino. But another run on the block here for Argentina. Campaso with the dribble. The drive. And the basket. Campaso. What a shot coming from the little big man. Well, what Campasso did right there is he split the defense off the pick, and now Argentina's on the run, and again it's Campasso. He's got numbers. It's back with Campasso, looking for Scola, and he fails to connect with a jump hook from inside a shaded area. Guillen in the long court over to Colmenares. Big man outside, going up against Scola. And it's going to be Argentina ball. Turnover against Venezuela. Well, Dean, Luis Scola, for all his years and experience, I mean, look, you thought Nesta Colmenares tried to cross him over, and Scola, anticipating where he's going, just able to put himself in the way that it caused a turnover. 39 years old, Luis Scola. Great defense that time, creating the turnover. Garina over to Scola. There's a double team against Cola. Vildosa looking to create space. Running out of time. 24 second shot clock violation against Argentina. Good defense by Venezuela, forcing that turnover. Poor shot. Well, again, poor offense by Argentina, not really making things happen again. You can see the backcourt players just holding the ball too much high on the wing. You got to make something happen, make a pass, make a cut, or penetrate in. Guillen with the ball. Lewis has it. Scrambling defense here. 
by Argentina. Lewis has the mismatch against Campaso. And Lewis has the ball once more. And then the deflection, Vildosa on the attack. And he gets it out, but the ball stolen by Venezuela. It's one turnover after another. Guillet almost losing possession. And it looks like stepping on the sideline here by Dwight Lewis. And again, another turnover. Play has been held there skeptical so far. The score is tied for all. Well, Nesta Colmenares was guilty again for turning the ball over, but then he did a great job of just getting back and stopping the fast break. But again, Venezuela, they got to take care of the basketball. As you just said, turnover after turnover. Both these two teams now, anxiety really starting to play up here in the early stages. Zamora checking in here for Venezuela. And he's up against Veldosa. Now the ball over to Campaso. There's a foul. Close to the baseline. And that'll be foul number three against Venezuela. While Argentina is still clean in the foul situation. Veldosa with the inbound. Well, that's three team fouls already here in just under four minutes of play, so. Campaso with the ball. A scoop pass over to Scola. He attempts from the outside, not there. Rebound by Vargas. Venezuela on the attack, it's Guillén. Over to Zamora. They're looking for Colmenares. Oh, easily picked up there by Delia. And then the easy two points in transition, Luis Scola. The oldest man on the floor, but the first one up court for Argentina to score in the layup. Which is how easy did Luis Scola make it look when he caught the ball like a wide receiver in American football and just gave it a simple finger roll. Luis. And now to Vargas. Over to Zamora, putting it on the floor. Colmenares with a strong move. Doesn't get it to fall, but Venezuela. Shot clock reset to 14. Zamora. From the outside, now another offensive rebound here by Venezuela. They bring it out, Zamora, and he will be fouled on the way to the hole, and it could be on Scola. Well, Campaso looks like he's down, took a bit of a shot now. He went down a while ago, so still down on the ground. Looks like he's in a bit of agony. Campaso, you see Scola and the other Argentine players checking on Campaso. He's being led back to the bench. A new man checking in for Argentina, for Campaso. La Provitola for Argentina now in the game. Well, Michael Carrera now checks into the game for Venezuela. Now Carrera, not the most offensive-minded player in the world, but very good athlete, very tough player. with a floater, not there, Scola with a rebound. Here we go once more, Argentina running, and it's gonna be an easy two, oh! That's a goaltending violation, no, they don't call it. Well, Michael Carrera just pinned him off the backboard. Talk about athleticism. Here's Dalia, and then to Scola, and that time he will not be denied. A one-handed slam dunk by 39-year-old Luis Scola. Well, Scola just went in the lane and gave it a throwdown. Carrera in the long court here for Venezuela. Looking for Colmenares. Guillén in the long court. Carrera has it. Vargas. Shot clock almost out of Venezuela. Two seconds to go. And then the drive and Carrera scores. Just beating the shot clock of Venezuela. Vildosa bringing it up. Campaso is sitting down. La Provitola, over to Scola, on the drive. He will be fouled, and he'll go to the line. We're going to go back to the play by Michael Carrera. It's like three seconds on the shot clock. Gave a pump fake, just used one drill. But again, look at the defense here. On force, just got beat to the spot by Scola. Now, you mentioned 39 years of age. But again, quick first step for a big man of age. And see the extra pass from Argentina. And the one-handed slammer coming from Scola. Over the last two years, he has played in the Chinese League for the Shanghai Sharks. And before that, 10 years in the NBA. What a storied career. 
as a professional, Luis Scola, in the twilight of his career, but hey, he's still getting things done on the floor. Well, no doubt about it. I mean, Luis Scola is an ambassador for the future of Argentina basketball, along with the likes of Manu Ginobili, but again, he's got to go to the bench now. Checking into the game is the man who made the move over to Madrid this year, having been the MVP of Liga de las Americas. That's Gabriel Deck out there, six foot eight, an absolute workhorse. He's going to give Venezuela a couple of problems. A lot of players from Argentina playing in the Spanish league. I count at least eight. Well, Marcus Delia, having come off the back of a season with Vukan Murthia, now making the move over to Mexico. Now, I thought that was an interesting move because big things were happening for his club, especially in the Champions League as Guillén goes all the way, and Carrera doesn't beat the shot clock. What an excellent pass coming from Guillén. They just ran out of time. You know, it's important if you're the point guard, you got to know how much time is left in the shot clock. That time, a beautiful move by Guillén, and a drop pass, Easy two points, but not counted. The shot coming after the shot clock expired. La Provitola on the outside, and then a pass inside to Delia. Delia is going to make this move, and there it is. A nice spin move with the left hand. Delia scoring inside the shaded area. Well, Colmenar is backed off of Delia just to sort of kind of fool him into full moving off balance. But in the end, you can't take any steps off Marcos Delia. Such a skillful post player. Here's Vargas up against Dalia. There's going to be a foul right there. And Garino called for it. Garino talking to the referees. He's got to watch it. Well, I'm not quite sure why he's getting so excited. I mean, him and Michael Carrera are battling down low. I think he might have been, he might have been saying that he was fouled on the other end of the floor, and now he was called for the same kind of contact. Well, the last thing he wants now is to pick up a technical foul. Just get on and play with it. 2.34 to go in the first quarter. Good atmosphere, good tempo. Just play the game. Guijen back on the bench, and now it's one of the Vargas boys on the floor. Chorio is also in the game here for Venezuela. A Profita is asking the official why he's been called for the foul. He just shoves them all out the way. These players need to remember, you're not in Liga de las Americas now. The rules may be a bit different, the style may be different. Zamora putting the ball on the floor. Oh, finding himself quite open. Doesn't make the shot. Carrera with the offensive rebound, but he loses it underneath. And he gets it back for the two points. Well, team, what an athlete Michael Carrera has had. Two chances, couldn't get it. So flexible, so agile, so athletic. This is why Venezuela need him. Bill Dosa in the long court. Over to Deck. And Deck is fouled as he was trying to manufacture a shot. Gabriel Deck, 24 years old. Gabriel Deck, the reason he's such a good player, Dean, is the fact is he reads the defense. You can see he got the ball up there, tried to pump fake with the three, took it in, but watch how he used his body going to the lane. I mean, he gets to the free throw line quite a lot. One of the young stars of the Argentine side, averaging nine points and 2.3 rebounds in this World Cup. And back in the qualifiers, averaging 9.6 points and 6.4 rebounds. In five games, here's Vargas. And Venezuela looking to execute. They're not getting anyone free. Not a good pass. And here's Argentina on the attack once more. Vildosa now playing the point guard position. We're picking it away. Here's a fake, and then the drive, and then the dish. Still no shot here for Argentina. Shot clock seven. A Provitola finding Delia. It's going to be an easy two points. That's what you call patience in the execution of the half court. Argentina getting it done with a beautiful pass in an easy layup. Well, again, that's down to Marcos Delia. Kick just gets the ball in the post. One dribble and a smooth reverse layup. Vargas taking too much time, and there's a shot. Oh, Zamora ringing the bell. Vargas finding the open man. Zamora hitting the outside shot. Oh, Delia 
missing from point blank distance. Now Venezuela on the attack. It's been a low scoring first quarter so far. 37.2 seconds to go. Venezuela hasn't even scored 10 points. Well, the physicality of this game on defense, as you mentioned, very low score, but both teams really making it difficult for each other. And you know that Argentina likes to keep the scores low. That is, the opponent scores low. They're giving up only an average of 70.3 points a game in this competition. 18 seconds on the shot clock of Venezuela. 37.2 seconds left. Touching the line? Yeah. Two points. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It will be a basket with two points. Two points. Referee signaling that that was a two-point shot. So again, the instant replay system coming to play. And that's been a very, very important instrument a very important tool in the World Cup to make sure that every call is done properly and everything is fair and square. Great job by the referees. Some more on the inbound. Over to Churio. Now it's Vargas in the long court. There's the pick set by Gajarol. Well, Vargas didn't do a good job of coming off the first screen, but then made the most of the second one. Just found a little bit of space. Now he hesitated, but he still was able to drop the jump shot. The score 14 to 12. Argentina looking to milk the clock. Last shot coming up here. Tough shot for Campaso. Does he get it off on time? Did he get it off on time? It looks like they count it. They counted the three-point basket by Campaso as time ran out here. A beautiful pass coming from La Provitola. And there's Campaso within time. And Campaso saying great pass. 17 to 12, Argentina up ahead at the end of the first quarter. We'll be right back. Some stats here on your screens. Well, Venezuela have yet to hit a shot from the perimeter, but they are 50% from within the rainbow. They haven't gone to the free throw line quite yet. Now, that's down to the fact that Nessa Colmenares and the likes of Carrera. Well, Carrera's going aggressively, but if you want to get to the free throw line, you've got to attack the basket more aggressively. That was a beautiful pass coming from Capazzo to Scola. And then Delia with that spin move inside the shaded area. We've seen some beautiful plays in this game so far and that was a shot by Dwight Lewis drawing applause from his Venezuela teammates and then the daredevil drive there you go Delia with another attack towards the basket and then connecting with the left hand here was that jump shot and Carrera with a move towards the basket watch it from another angle Carrera getting it done with a layup shot and don't forget the official app. You'll get all the live games, the stats, BWC, the Basketball World Cup, the highlights. Down it, download it now for free. Second quarter action, just about ready to, ready to go. Churio with the inbound here for Venezuela. Vargas up against Campaso. Still with Vargas. And there's a push by Churio to get free. And there is Samora. That shot was blocked. Now Argentina on the attack. Deck. Over to Stolen now. And there's an outside shot. He will be fouled. La Provitola was fouled taking the three-pointer. And he'll go to the line for three points, for three free throws. Dean, I've got to ask the question, if that's a foul down there, then how come it wasn't a foul down on Zamora? Zamora, a clear contact on his hand when he shot the three-point. I mean, that is a foul, no doubt. But not much different than when Zamora took the three. La Provitola. And he'll be taking three free throws. 
in this competition. He's averaging 10.7 points a game, 1.3 rebounds and 2.7 assists. 19.5 minutes a contest for Argentina. Free throws coming up for La Provitola. Gunning the first. Argentine fans coming in all sizes and shapes here in Foshan, enjoying the action. Free throw number two. Well, last thing Venezuela won is going to be sending Argentina to the free throw line again. What they also don't want to want is give them enough time and space to shoot the three ball because Argentina is renowned for perimeter shooting. Free throw number three coming up here for La Provitola. And he gets it done. Three for three. As now Argentina opening up an eight point lead. Vargas playing the point guard position while Guillen is sitting on the bench. Some more on the long court. Carrera asking for the ball. And then it's with Churio. Vargas again. And the ball is loose. It's picked up by Argentina. Argentina on the attack. It's Tech. He's got the basketball. And Capasso has it in the long court. Good decision by Deck. Deck's got the mismatch on. He's going to spin baseline. He's got to go to work now. Against Vargas. And there he goes with the shot and gets the ball to fall inside. Well, that's a switch that Venezuela don't want. They don't want anybody smaller guard than Gabriel Deck because he's just simply going to go to work. A lot of physicality in the action between Carrera and Deck. Carrera has it, takes the outside shot. Not there. We can see Coach Maduro saying to Michael Carrera, get to the basket. We don't want you shooting the three. Michael Carrera's got to get to the hoop as much as possible. Here's a turnover against Argentina. La Provitola should have passed the ball earlier. Here's that move by Deck against a much smaller Vargas. Spinning and then finding the mark with a medium range jumper inside the shaded area. Colmenar is back on the floor for Venezuela. And also this man is with the handle. Guillen. Over to Guillen. Oh, it's way all the way home. A beautiful pass coming from Colmenares. Well, I'll tell you what, Dean, I've said it so many times in Liga de las Americas for the past three years. Heiser Guillen is the Stephen Curry of Venezuela. Deck giving it over to Campaso. Argentina. Oh, beautiful pass over to Scola, and he scores once more. This guy is Mr. Facilitator. That's Campaso. He does such a good job of fighting who's open among his teammates, and it's usually Luis Scola for the receipt, and then Scola with a block. Argentina on the run. Campaso has it. Oh, beautiful pass. Garina, however, keeping the ball alive. La Provitola. Finding Deck, Deck with the outside shot, not there. And Argentina keeping that ball alive. Scola with the outside shot. Well, it's just not knocking down right now for Argentina from the perimeter, but you know, Venezuela had to keep going at him now. And here's another steal. Turnover against Venezuela. La Provitola has the ball. Swing it over to Garino, and now it's back with Campaso. Garino putting it on the floor. And there's a foul by Vargas. Ten well, it's point only, lead by Argentina. Only now the second team foul of the quarter. But again, this game's getting a little bit physical right now. And the officials are going to have to make sure the tempers don't flare because you can see a few players getting quite frustrated. Venezuela calling a timeout. We'll be right back after this one. Check out some stats here. Field goal percentage, Argentina 53%, Venezuela 39%. And here in the second quarter, Venezuela scored only two points. 
On the other hand, you got Argentina already scoring seven points. So it's a 72 run by Argentina here in the second quarter. Well, now Venezuela's got a response. It's, as you said, down by 10 with a 7-2 run. But again, Luis Scola, too easy right now. Got to be more physical with him. Don't let him get any time or space. But he's also doing it down the defensive end. You see he had the block under the basket against Colmenares. Venezuela want to stay in this game. They've got to take the basket with, fear, with no fear, sorry. And Scola, the leader of this Argentine team, he's getting it done on both ends of the floor. consummate professional Luis Scola and you called him the ambassador of Argentine basketball still active and well, what still he, getting the job done well, what he is just the face of Argentina basketball since the retirement of manager Ginobili but well, Compasso now a bit of contact oh, I think La he could have got an M1 there La Provitola with a shot unbelievable shot from La Provitola and Deck Going up against the Thelmi. Ball moving around. Guijen. Nice crossover dribble. Getting off a shot. Not finding the mark. And Deck with an authoritative rebound. Bringing it up. Campaso. Getting the screen from Deck. Still the ball screen. Oh, beautiful. Oh, missed shot. That was a beautiful pass. There was a switch that time Deck failing to find the mark. Wide open inside against the mismatch. Dijen not able to pull the trigger. Now he does. And he scores! You called him the Venezuelan Steph Curry. Well, I remember in Liga de las Americas, he was pulling up for three-pointers halfway between the half-court and the three-pointer. You just can't give him any time or space because he will set fire. Beautiful shot that time. But it's interesting that Venezuela now has two point guards on the floor. Vargas and Guillén playing together. And a missed shot there by Scola. Would have been a beautiful play. Vargas on the attack. Vargas looking for who's open. Churio with a shot. Oh, in and out. But Colmenares getting the offensive rebound. Another outside shot. That time ringing the bell. Well, Dean, I got to tell you. The last two defensive plays of Venezuela, they got off lucky. They had the switch with Gabriel Deck, Adam Vargas, where he missed the layup. And of course, their Scola missed the open alley-oop. But again, Venezuela made a big bit of a comeback. They've got to pick it up on defense. And now as Colmenares can't finish it. Oh, he missed the shot. He could have gone for the rebound, but he missed the shot. Well, that's Deck. And he will score, and he'll go to the line. Well, Dean, look, Coach Maduro's going crazy right now because he's looking at Colmenares while he's whining and crying about not getting the call. He's just cost his team now an M1. He could have picked up the ball after that miss. And you look at this strong move, a physical move by Deck. And he got hit in the face as he went up. And then Deck overjoyed by that play. He got the basket and he'll go to the line for the bonus. Argentina playing physical. They're getting the ball close to the basket and they're powering their way for easy layups. The lead is 10. Vargas. Looking for Guijen. Guijen now playing the two guard position. They wanted to score more. Here's a low block move by Colmenares. And it will be a foul against, against Scola. Well, Scola now obviously putting a lot of physical pressure on defense. He now picks up his second personal of the game. But that's what Nessa Colmenares has to do. Get the ball in the low block, back down, put the big man in trouble. Here's the inbound. Going to Vargas. Guijan has it. Looking for the other Vargas. Two Vargas brothers down the floor. Nice nifty move. Not able to get the ball inside the hoop. Well, he's got to make the layup underneath the basket. I mean, that's just key opportunities Venezuela can't miss if they're going to stay in this basketball game. And Argentina calling time. Been a humdinger here in Foshan. Argentina's timeout. Argentina ahead by 10. We'll be right back.
Back here in Foshan, Argentina. They've won seven of their last nine games against teams from the Americas in the World Cup. But their last game against a team from the Americas in the World Cup was in 2014, and they lost that one to Brazil, 85 to 65. You check out some stats here. Points of turnovers, Argentina with a big advantage, 11 to two. Well, no doubt about it, Argentina's got a rich history, of course, but again, it's going to be a tough World Cup for these two teams, especially Argentina with the big boys to go, to go up against. But right now, we're going to have to deal with the physical Venezuela side that just won't go away. Take a look at that shot coming from Guigent from way downtown. Venezuela players saying three points for Guigent. Here's Colmenares. Ball still with Venezuela. Vargas brothers on the floor, along with Colmenares, Guillén, and Bethelmi. Here's Vargas. Stop and pop. Not there, and Colmenares. Another offensive rebound from ben Venezuela. And there's the outside shot coming from Bethelmi. And he rings the bell from outside. Well, that would just lift the spirits and confidence. He cuts it down to a set point ball game. But again, that's the Colmenares. Well, they force a turnover now, so. Well, actually, Argentina going to get the ball back. Ball batted away by Guillén. But making it difficult now for Italy to bring up the basketball. Take a look at that shot coming from Bethelmi. Nothing but net. Campasso over to La Provitola. And that time he missed from the outside. Easy rebound for Vargas. Venezuela down seven. Bethelmi on the attack. Doesn't get it. Uh, Getting the ball back, but he was outside. And he smiles. <laughs> Referees calling the mob guys to wipe that slick portion on the court. 3.36 left here in the second quarter. Guigent. You saw him in your screens. And then the Argentine coach of Venezuela, Fernando Duro, Luis Scola. Well, Argentina now just needs to keep asserting himself, attacking the basket. When they throw the ball down low, Venezuela very frail on defense to either commit a foul or just get beat to the spot. Now Deck going all the way to the lane. Unbelievable move by Deck. Putting it on the floor, the big man can really move. A nice sweep. Search to the basket for Deck, and there's the outside shot. Guijet missing. Campasso with the basketball. Garrino over to Campasso. And then the pick by Scola. Looking to run the pick and roll. And there's a foul, that'll be foul number four against Venezuela in this quarter. Well, now checking into the game is young fellow Nicholas Brasino. Now he's got the length, but again, what Brasino's game has improved this year, we saw in the qualifiers, is he shot a little bit better from the perimeter. So definitely by having him in the court, they can spread the floor for Argentina. Campasso, and there's Deck from the outside, but missing it. Venezuela. Almost losing the handle that time. Bethelmi over to Vargas. Vargas using the Bethelmi pick. And then two misses from close range by Venezuela. Deck has it. Oh, Luis Cola going down. And he was fouled upstairs. Well, Luis Scola. Could be Scola on the foul. Definitely Luis Scola with the over the back call, but I love the fact that Luis Scola, 39 years old, is still trying to jump over the younger players. Watch it there. Scola coming from behind, and yes, it was the over the back foul, and that'll be foul number three against Luis Scola, and he has to go back to the bench. Well, the good thing about Argentina is when Scola goes to the bench, Marcus Delia now, one of their top post players, hasn't had many good looks on the ball now, is in the game. And Vargas scoring off the window. Easy two points here by Vargas. 
Mark is telling the referees that someone is pulling down his jersey. Provitola over to Deck, over to Campasso. Campasso using the pick by Dalia. And then a beautiful pass coming from the weak side by Deck. Beautiful execution of the play by Argentina. You gotta love it. Well, Deck, what well, he's such a good player, and this is why he was the MVP. His, his movement off the ball is just second to none, of course. Dijent and Vargas in the long court. Vargas on the attack. And then he was foiled. Dalia with a block shot on Vargas. And another possession for Argentina. They're up by nine. Here's the outside shot. Almost there for Brusini. Venezuela now taking some poor shots that you can see Vargas just fading away out of bounds. We got a three in transition. Oh, look at that. A tip. Well, Dean, I'm not sure if that was Brusino or if that was Bethany knocking to his own basket. Yeah, and I think that credit to Brusino on the offensive putback. Less than a minute to go here in the first half. Argentina up by 11. Venezuela having a difficult time executing. And look at that move. Brusino, I thought that ball might have had a chance getting inside, but you know that's allowed in FIBA. Batting that ball away, not a goal tip. And there's a foul by Vargas. And Venezuela in the penalty, so Argentina will be shooting free throws. Well, you can see the problem right now for Venezuela is again very frustrated. Nothing's going their way, and that's a frustration foul by Vargas. The only unfortunate part now is Campazzo is going to go to the free throw line for two shots. Time out on the floor. We'll be right back with 20.5 seconds to go here in the first half. in this game so far, 10 to 5 in favor of Argentina. And Venezuela with nine turnovers and only six for Argentina. Venezuela scored only 13 points here in the second quarter as against 19 for Argentina. So rather a low scoring ball game, neither team has hit 40 points at this point in the game. Here's that behind the back pass from Campaso. We've seen some beautiful plays in this game, and it can't get any better. Argentina looking to protect its unblemished record of 3-0. Here now in the second round of competitions in the FIBA World Cup, Campaso with a shot. And another free throw coming up here for Facundo Campaso. 5'10", 1 meter 79. Twelve-point lead for Argentina. Make that 13. 20.5 seconds to go before the end of the first half. Venezuela looking to run down the clock, looking for the last shot. There's Vargas. He goes for the basket, but he misses. Delia with the possession, and then running out of space was Bethelmi. Well, Dean, I just got a question around it. Coach Duro has got to talk to his players when they go into halftime because, you know, they had 20 seconds. They had enough time to dribble down for the last shot. Vargas, you know what? He's got to keep his head. Decides to go one-on-one, -on -one, and now Argentina have five seconds to get one more shot off. Here's the timeout on the floor. We'll be right back.
The Argentine coach Sergio Hernandez giving instructions here with five seconds to go. They've got a chance to score a basket here and close out the half. Venezuela, as you were saying, Josh, giving an opportunity for Argentina to score the last basket. When, when they had the ball with 20.5 seconds to go, they could have actually closed out the scoring with their possession. Well, I think for Venezuela right now, they're getting very frustrated on the offense because they've had a few situations where cools haven't gone their way. But you know what? This is the World Cup. This is the game they've got to win. And you're up against the Titans right now, Argentina. You've got to play with more smarts. Problem is now Argentina. Five seconds left. I guarantee you they're going to get a shot off. Venezuela only 25 points scored in this half. 12 in the first period, or rather first quarter, and 13 in the second quarter. Here's Campaso. And time running out in Argentina. La Provitola missing the shot, and that's it. That's the end of the first half. 38 for Argentina, 25 for Venezuela. 13 point advantage by Argentina. Been a good one. Been a low scoring ball game. Very defense oriented. Venezuela just can't get its offense to roll. And as we said earlier, the first quarter set the tone for Argentina. The defensive game of the Argentine team holding Venezuela to just 12 points in the first quarter and then just 13 in the second quarter. You see Luis Scola leaving the floor. He's got nine points in the ball game, but three personal fouls. Argentine fans and Venezuelan fans here in Foshan applauding their national teams. Look at the stats right here. Josh, run us through these stats. Well, right now, Venezuela only 3 for 10 for the perimeter. Again, those stats coming from Luis Bethany. But look at Argentina, 12 for 17 from within the rainbow. High percentage team shooting. That's coming from Luis Scola and Gabriel Deck. No surprise. And again, 24 points to 8. Venezuela, they're struggling right now with Nesta Colmenares. And they've got to do something on the defense against Luis Scola. Check out some more stats. Their leading scorers so far. Deck in double figures for Argentina. No one in double figures for Venezuela. And that I see that right, Venezuela did not take a single free throw yep. in this game so far. They never went to the line. And Deck putting the ball on the floor. And then Luis Scola with a beautiful layup off that picture-perfect pass coming from Campaso. We're seeing some magic moves here by Facundo Campaso, the facilitator for Team Argentina. And Zamora with the outside shot. Guigent again with the outside shot. Dwight Lewis, the naturalized player for Venezuela, hitting it from medium range. Drawing applause from his Venezuelan teammates. And Campaso, look at that shot. I call him the magic man, Facundo Campaso. The magic man of Argentina, the magician. And Deck getting away with that layup shot. And here's Michael Carrera with a strong move to the basket. At the half, Argentina 38, Venezuela 25. We'll be right back for more action in the second half. Hang in there.
is Le Saul going up again. The French firecracker with another dunk. Pass. Great pass. Pass towards Tice. It didn't come off. Turned back over. And then back to Germany again. Zips it to Tice. Throwing one high. Oh my word. How about the finish from Maxi Weber? Finally, some German joy in the World Cup. Hachimura, he just ripped through the ozone layer and pounded it home of Miles Turner. And here comes Greece. Galatis gets it. Oh, oh, oh. Are you kidding me? Jalen Brown on the runway. Oh. oh! How about Jalen Brown packing it? My parents gave me away, so I had no purpose in this life. Yeah. Oh. When you educate a woman, you educate a nation. It's a quote from Nelson Mandela, by the way.
We were about a minute away from starting the second half of this game between Argentina and Venezuela. So far, Argentina dictating the tempo, dictating the pace, dictating the action. They're up ahead by 13, 38, 25, and a low scoring ball game where they've held Venezuela to 12 points in the first quarter, 13 points in the second quarter. That's tough defense. Anytime that you hold a team like Venezuela down to just 25 points in one half, you're playing good defense. Well, Venezuela as well, they're the victims of their own downfall because they're just getting so frustrated. You can see Isaac Ian hasn't really been able to get his three-point shot off as well he would have liked to. And again, Nesta Colmenar, as we saw it, had a missed layup, looked at the referee, could have got the rebound and gone right back up with it. They've got to be more disciplined now. Venezuela averaging 76 points in this competition. But only 25 points here at the half. If you double that output, it's only 15 points for the game. And they're averaging 76 points, so they're way off target as far as this game is concerned. You've got to give credit to Argentina for making that possible. As you see the former FIBA president, Horacio Muratore, and uh, there's been a new FIBA president elected, Mr. Niang of Mali, to serve from 2019 to 2023. But under the leadership of Mr. Muratore as FIBA president, the organization really, really took off. Tremendous progress, tremendous development, a lot of innovations, and we're seeing it. We're seeing those new developments, new innovations here in the 2019 FIBA World Cup. And a prime example is the use of the IRS, the instant replay system that has worked wonders here in the competitions. Well, that's the aim of FIBA, of course, Dean, is to make basketball accessible, spread the love of the game, make sure that everybody has the opportunity. And what better way to do it here at the FIBA World Cup? More teams this year, more people able to compete. Second half now underway. Campasso with the outside shot. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Campasso with a three-point shot. Looks like he was fouled as he went up for the shot. So that shot will count. He'll go to the line. It'll be a four-point play opportunity. Watch it right here. Here's the move, and then the foul after the release. Wait a minute, what's going on? I was gonna say, Dean, if they called that a foul, you might as well call every tip, tap, or a sneeze a technical foul, because I'm not sure what out. I think it was a foul off the ball they've called. But there was no way that he was fouled on the three-point shot, hardly any contact. But the basket counted, yeah, so. Yeah, looks like the basket did count. Well, Argentina now making a very uncharacteristic turn of Gabriel Deck, unaware of how much time is on the shot clock. Dijen bringing up the ball over to Colmenares in the long court. Colmenares hasn't been effective offensively in this game. He has not scored a single point so far. Dijen. He's being trapped. And now he gets the ball back. There's a shot from Vargas. Got it to go! Got it to go! As the shot clock ran out. Well, it was a tough, the basket. tough give and go play there. You see Guillen and Nessa Colmenares got it back, but Guillen had to go baseline. Luckily then, spotting out Vargas, who does a good job at knocking down the open three. And to start the second half, both teams scoring three pointers. Deck over to Campasso. Over to Bruce Rusino. And then the basket inside. And they will count it. Well, Gabriel Deck just does such an excellent job, Dean. Look how he curls the screen here. Susie curls it, bit of contact, then just goes off one-handed off the backboard. This man's got the touch of God inside the red paint. Gabriel Deck going to the line to complete the three-point play opportunity. And now Argentina up by 15, looking to stretch it further. Gabriel Deck, 24 years old, playing for Real Madrid in Spain. Just made the move over to Madrid this year. Having a bit of a struggle at the beginning, getting into the lineup. I think he was in the second string at the beginning. But again, if you look at how well he did in Argentina before that, he was Argentina, or South America's best player for that matter. Colmenares being hounded here by Deck. 14, 14. And there's a foul that's called by the referee. Well, Deck just sarcastically 
smiling at the official for the foul. But you got to remember, when these guys play in Argentina, Venezuela, Liga de las Americas, it's very physical play. Now, they got to remember, here at the World Cup, you are going to get called for those fouls. Carrera in the long court. Defended by Brusino. Ball inside. And then the connection. Strong move that time. Well, Ruiz just does such a good job of curling off the screen, getting it now. He almost got blocked there, but that's what Venezuela need. They need more movement off the ball. And the more physical play, the better for Venezuela. They've got to power their way close to the basket. And Garino fouled in the act of shooting. It looks like he will go to the line. He has not scored in this game so far. He's averaging 10.3 points, 4.7 rebounds. In this competition, he's also hitting 49.4% from three. So he's a dead shot from the outside. That's his first point in the ball game. That's Garrido. Nice stroke for Garrido. Two out of two, 26 years old. And he too plays in the Spanish league. Well, Heiser Gillen now needs to get things going a bit more. If he's not going to go off the screen, he needs to attack the basket because right now Argentina's defense just isn't moving enough. Here's Carrera up against Deck. Physical play looks like it'll be on Deck. And again, Dean, I'll go back there. You saw it was very physical, and the officials really quick to get in. But if you look, Gabriel Deck just walked away. That's normal play for them back in Argentina. That's very normal back in Venezuela. Very physical basketball. There's Carrera at the line for the free throws. Hitting the first. Carrera in the first half with four points and two rebounds. Campaso up against Vargas. There's a screen by Deck. I saw someone pulling Deck's jersey. Garrino. Oh! He'll go to the line again. Nice strong drive there by Garrino. Well, right now, Argentina is just causing Venezuela all sorts of problems. Penetration is making a defense collapse. Argentina got to play better man to man defense because they've just been pulled apart. 4.6 seconds in the shot clock of Argentina when Garina put the ball on the floor and went up for the shot. So, good time management on the part of Argentina, realizing how much time was left on the shot clock. Garino, he, early, he earlier made two free throws. Does it again. He's got four points and four free throws in this game. Ruiz moving out. Perez checking in for the first time in this contest. Now it's Kijen bringing up the ball, not Vargas. Carrera in the long court looking for Vargas, looking for Colmenares, finding Kijen. Up against a much bigger Garino. And then it's Deck against Kishen. Kishen with a step back, not there. Well, it's tough to get a shot off like that against. As I was saying against Gabriel Deck, I was just making sure Michael Carrera wasn't injured going into the basket like that. But again, what a good athlete he was just to jump up and stop Marcus D'Elia from getting out of it. Michael Carrera just kind of pushed Elia. And Delia nudged him back, so those two, a little bit of competition going on. Nice deflection that time by Carrera. Oh, look at that. Carrera with a goal 10. And they score the basket for Deck on the drive. Vargas in the backcourt. The lead is up to 18 now. Argentina pulling away, slowly but surely. Carrera, outside. Over to Perez. Scoop pass over to Vargas. 
Vargas able to penetrate, and then Carrera with a shot inside. Well, it's much better now for Michael Carrera now. as Garino kicking out to Delia. Paso outside. There's the move. Oh, beautiful pass. Beautiful pass to Delia. And Campasso, exactly where Delia was going to be. Wonderful execution. I'm calling Campasso the magician. The way he's doing his magical moves on the floor. Unbelievable. Well, you're definitely right. He is a magician because he's just picking apart the Venezuelan defense. Carrera with a ball fake. And then the shot. Finding the mark. Michael Carrera. Wide open shot there for Garino. It's been all Argentina here in the third quarter as they open up an 18 point lead. We've got a timeout on the floor. We'll be right back. Well, you look, neither team really shooting that well from the perimeter right now. But again, I got to go back to the last play. Venezuela were caught on a high line there that they put in the high post from Argentina. Nobody in help side. And if you got a wide open like that that they'd have from the Garino, then really you got to look yourself in the mirror because Venezuela are just way behind. Garino now with six points in the ball game. and Deck, the two players in double figures for Argentina. Deck with a breakout here in the third quarter. Already with 15 points. Michael Carrera, the only man in double figures for Venezuela with 10. And look at that easy layup shot coming from Garino. Well, Dean, Michael Carrera is an unusual offensive threat for Venezuela. And right now, down by 18 points, he happens to be that top scorer. And look at Argentina going for the jugular. Full court press. Putting pressure here in the Venezuelan backcourt. Now it's over to Carrera. Vargas has it against Campaso. There's the switch. And then a drop pass. Carrera looking for space. Carrera getting it done. Two points for Michael Carrera, as you were saying. So offense minded. He'll go to the line for a bonus. Three point play opportunity coming up from Michael Carrera. You watch it right here. Carrera with a fake. And then the move, the elevation, the suspension in midair, and the two points for Michael Carrera. Well, two years ago, Michael Carrera was playing for Aftadel Saratov in the Basketball Champions League. And again, probably only had about two shots per game because he's such a versatile athletic player. But good to see him now move up to 30 points. 4.55 left here in the third quarter. Campaso. Still with Campaso. He thought about it. And then the pass was deflected and picked up here by Venezuela. Guillén over to Vargas. Vargas on the drive. And oh, missing the shot. Still miss on the offensive rebound by Ruiz. Venezuela can't buy a basket. Campaso. And there's the screen by Dalia. Dalia looking to seal. Garino. With a shot. Oh, yes. Marina now with eight points. Remember, he did not score a single point in the first half. And now he's got eight. Coming close to his average of 10.3 points a game. There's a switch. Big man on Vigen. And he's forced to give up the ball. And another turnover. Oh, excellent. Oh, look at Vigen. Well, they got numbers now. The pocket. And here we go. Carrera with a shot. The hand time. And he'll go to the line for a three-point play opportunity. Carrera, the man of the moment. 
for Venezuela, now with 15 points. Guillet with a beautiful pass. And then the foul by Garino as Carrera elevated for the shot. I really thought that Isla Guillen was going to throw the ball up to Carrera for an alley -oop. Now Carrera, top scorer so far for Venezuela with 16 points. And actually top scorer in the game, Dean. That's right. The lead down to 14 by Argentina. Brusino with the basketball over the deck. And the shot coming from Garino, missing the mark. Here's Venezuela putting some space. The outside shot coming from Zamora. Oh, nothing there. Missed everything. An air ball. Campaso with a bullet-like pass over to Garino, and he will score. Garino will score. Campaso, the magician, again with a beautiful pass. Venezuela just starting to build a little bit of momentum, but then it costs the arrow. And I think with a team like Argentina, you get it wrong, they'll make you pay. You get it right, they'll still make you pay. Carrera. Missing the shot from outside. Deck has it. Argentina in control. The lead is 16. Compasso has it. Looking to execute. A lot of time left on Argentina's shot clock. Rosino giving up the screen and then the pass inside to Dalia. A stolen there by Venezuela. Vargas. Dribbling hard, passing it off to Carrera. Vargas again. And he was foiled in midair. Vargas saying he was fouled. But I thought it was good defense by Argentina. Well, Marcos Delia did such a good job of just keeping his hands high and not really going into Vargas, allowing Vargas to go into him. Now we got two minutes in the third to go. Let's see how Argentina can finish this one up. That's two consecutive turnovers now against Argentina. And Vargas going strong and getting the shot. Venezuela wanted that badly. He was blocked in the previous play by Venezuela. And now we've got a timeout on the floor. They want to break momentum. Less than two minutes to go here in the third quarter. The lead of Argentina down to 14. But Argentina still on top, still in control. 58 to 44. It's an Argentina timeout. We'll be back. Telling his boys, you gotta play defense, you gotta play transition defense. If Venezuela wants to play physical, I think it's important for Argentina to stand its ground. Now you see Luis Scola, three personal fouls. Really hasn't played here in the second half. He's got nine points all scored in the first half. Luis Scola. They won't risk him getting back in the game and picking up a fourth personal foul. Fernando Duro, the Argentinian coach of Venezuela. You see him on your screens. Sergio Hernandez, the head coach of Argentina. Well, Venezuela now just putting a bit of a full court press, just try and put Argentina under pressure. Argentina deal with it, no problems. Campaso to Brusino, over to Campaso. Brusino again. Now they've got the ball in Delia's hands. Campaso, the screen by Delia. Well, that's a travel in my mind. Apriotola. Ran out of time. A perfect pass over to Delia. But Argentina running out of time. Venezuela, good defense. Forcing that 24 second shot clock violation against Argentina. Guillen. And they call a foul on the push. It might be on Campaso.
Well, Dean, I'd have to see the replay of that because, again, might be a little bit of contact, but my question is how well did Michael Carrera sell it, though? There's coach Fernando Duro and one of the Venezuelan players, Zamora. Both teams in a penalty, so it'll be a shooting situation here for Michael Carrera, who's gone berserk offensively here in the third quarter, Josh. Oh, I feel a bit guilty now because before the game I said he wasn't much of an offensive threat, but you know what? Prove me wrong. <laughs> He's certainly doing that. He must have heard you, Josh. A lot He's of people hear me He's these challenged. days. <laughs> and stepping up to the challenge here is Michael Carrera. Oh, missing his second free throw. Carrera with 17 points. Argentina with Campaso. And there's a foul by Zamora. Campaso will go to the line. Two free throws coming up. Well, this is where you'll see like any bit of contact right now. Once they know the officials are making these calls, players will start to just sort of knee-jerk reaction to any contact. And again, it just slows the play down a bit. Here's Campaso hitting the free throw, the first one. A little over a minute to go here in the third quarter. Two for two here for Campaso. And he goes to the bench. Vildosa, who started this game for Argentina, back on the floor. Guillen, speeding it up. Looking for someone to pass to. No screen set for Guillen. Over to Perez. And Michael Carrera. Spin move. And then, oh, strong move to the hole. 19 points for Michael Carrera. He's doing it all here for Venezuela. Well, Michael Carrera is just going to work right now. Spinning around, pump fakes, using the finger rolls. Rosino now just catches a very awkward pass, but. Carrera with 15 points scored here in the third quarter. 19 in total for the game. Deck with a set shot. And Deck with the connection from beyond the arc. A three-pointer coming from Gabriel Deck. Well, Gabriel Deck just punched the air afterwards effortlessly. Looked like a tire pass, best to say. God, I'm so frustrated. Finally got my shot off. Time running out here on Guijan. And he missed the shot. And that's the end of the third quarter. Argentina in the driver's seat, 63, Venezuela 47. And we'll be right back for fourth quarter action. Here are the stats so far. Two-point connections, Argentina 78% shooting. Both teams have scored four tri triples each. And the free throws, 15 free throws scored by Argentina in this game. And you watch Campaso with his magical moves. The magician hitting it from the outside. He's scoring, he's facilitating. And then the whip pass over to a connection from long distance by Vargas, Fernando Duro, the Venezuelan coach, and then the back pass and a beautiful connection by Garino, and then Deck with a one-hander, scoring it, and that was a three-point play. Opportunity for him, and he scored in the free throw. And then the big move by Ruiz, close to the basket, Herrera, has been sterling for Venezuela. 19 points in the game, 15 in the third quarter. Campaso with a beautiful pass. Again, those magical moves by Campaso to find his open teammate for the easy two points. And you wonder if Luis Scola is coming back to the game. He's got three personal fouls, nine points. You know that he's averaging 17 points and nine rebounds a game. But in the sport of basketball, it's not about individual stats. It's about the team getting the W. Well, right now, Argentina don't so much need him in the game, but you know, Venezuela, they do make chip backs and it's been led by Michael Carrera. But again, I would bring Luis Scola back in at some point. 
And here's Zamora with the outside shot. Cabrera with the offensive rebound. Kijen from the outside. Got it to go! All from downtown, Kijen hitting it. And the lead is down to 13. Well, it was about time that Heiser Kijen got a shot going. You can see, had the first opportunity in the corner that didn't go so well. Michael Carrera got the rebound and just spot now again. He was at least two steps behind the three-point line. Perez going back to the bench. A little unhappy. Here's La Provitola, bringing it up. Over to Brasino. And they'll call another foul here against Venezuela. That's two team fouls now, early in the fourth quarter. Well, Dean, I just can't. I've got to go back to the discipline. I said it before the second half. Venezuela have no discipline on man-to-man -man defense. He's all over him. It's got to be a foul. You don't want to get them in the penalty too early. Brusino missing the mid-range shot. Venezuela with a rebound. Guillén still with a basketball. Getting it back from Ruiz. And there's another foul, or rather the first foul on Argentina in this quarter. Churio is on the floor for Venezuela, along with Carrera, Ruiz, Zamora, and Guillén. Well, Carrera, get the ball. no one to pass to. Five second violation, almost. not careful. Almost. And then the shot by Guillén, not finding the mark. Oh, what a beautiful pass. And Gabriel Deck with a beautiful shot. And a wonderful pass coming from La Provitola. 15 point advantage by Argentina. Guillén. Guillén. Over to Carrera. Still. Back to Guillén. 101 against Delia. There's a Steph Curry like jumper. Not finding the mark by Guillén. Not a good shot to take. Well, right now, Heisler Guichan really isn't moving the ball enough. He's got it too much in his hands. He's got to move it. If you've got it, make a penetration or something, but don't hold on to it too long. Now it's a good opportunity for Venezuela to get out on the break. Michael Carrera going strong to the hole, missing it. A big rebound here by Gabriel Deck. Deck over to La Provitola. Over to Viltosa from the outside. Got it to go! Got it to go, Viltosa! Thanking the heavens for that three-point shot. Lead is 18. Guillén with a basketball. Up against Mildoza. Still with Guillén. Venezuela looking stagnant in this offensive set. Guillén. And there's a foul by Argentina. That will not count. And that'll be the second team foul here for Argentina in this quarter. Well, interesting now, Coach Duro making a complete four-man changer in his substitutions. Now, he's keeping in only one player at the moment. So far, Churio's the only one standing. That's very interesting that he's making that big change, but again, they need a bit more ball movement. Everybody needs to get involved too much. And there's another foul. This time on Vildoza, that's foul number three now against Argentina. They're picking up the fouls in a hurry. A lot of time left here, 7.33. Argentina just one away from the penalty. That's a meal like Vargas pushed him off, but again, uh, probably the contact that happened before that, what the official didn't like. Churio with the inbound. Looking for Dwight Lewis. Over to Vargas. Moving that ball around, it's back to Churio. Churio with a jab step, another jab step. And a spin move, and he will score! Score the basket! Junior with a spin move! Well, it's a tough move because he took on the former MVP of Liga de las Americas and took no fear of taking him onto the basket. And now Venezuela can get out on a break again with Gregory Vargas. Junior with a step back, and he will miss to Argentinians. Well, Dean, he should have shot possession. the first one. Yeah, I think so too. Here's Verdosa, 
with a pass inside. The pass deflected, stolen. And now it's Vargas on the attack. It's Dwight Lewis. Ball batted out of his hands. Luis Cola is checking back in. As you said, Josh, Argentina needing him to settle things down. They're up by 16 points. They want to make sure that they seal the deal. And you need Luis Cola to make it happen. 16 point advantage by Argentina with 6.40 to go. Dude, this is what I love about Gabriel Deck. Look at him right now, his body language. I mean, he's having a great game so far. He's got 20 points, three rebounds, but he looks bored. He looks like he needs <laughs> something to entertain him. And here's a steal by La Provitola. And then Deck going strong to the hole. He'll be fouled. He'll go to the line for two points. And another wonderful pass coming from the backcourt of Argentina. La Provitola finding Gabriel Deck moving strong to the hole. Deck now. To the line and Colmenares, you see him on your screens. Colmenares has not scored a single point in this game. And Deck with the free throws. You know, I mentioned Colmenares. He's averaging 11.7 rebounds in this competition. And for him not to score a single point in this game, that's a major letdown for Venezuela. Well, he's one of their key players. And again, like with his coach and some teammates playing for Cuaras de Lara, he usually is a main man, but tonight just hasn't been his night. Vildosa. And it's a pick and roll here for Scola. And Scola will miss, but he'll go to the line. Simple play. But what made that play possible was the great spacing of Argentina and Venezuela not able to anticipate the pick and roll action from Argentina. Well, Venezuela now, you can't fault their effort. The effort and the heart is there just right now. It's just costly errors and mistakes. But again, the disorganization that they have. And Luis Scola. Now in his double figures. He's got 10 points in the contest. Three personal fouls. Looking to make it an even 20 point lead here for Argentina. And he does. Five fifty-three to go. Vargas still in the backcourt. Tough defense by Vildoza. Outside shot. Oh yes. Ringing the bell, Beth Elby, that's the second three-pointer of the game. Well, very strange. We didn't see much of him in the third quarter at all. And again, he's one of their only perimeter shooters in the game. And a player like that in a game like this, you need your best players on the court. I check that. That's his third three-pointer of the game. And Deck. Oh! He made the set shot. He doesn't elevate. When he, when he goes up for that shot, he doesn't elevate. It's a set shot from three-point distance. I used to spend the last three years wondering how Gabriel Deck is such a high scorer with that set shot. But again, just a workhorse and Colmenares now finally getting his first two points of the game. And the first bucket for Colmenares in this contest. Here in the fourth period, or rather fourth quarter. Here's Mendoza. Ball moving around here, it's Gabriel Deck. Putting it on the deck. Here we go. And a zip pass over to Garino. Oh, in and out. Venezuela on the attack. It's Vargas. Betelmi with the ball fake. Scola not biting. Scola right there. Oh, Betelmi scoring it. Scola sort of backed off, realizing that it could have been called for a fourth personal foul. Mildoza. Over the deck. La Provitola. And then putting the move on Vargas. Oh, easy two points. La Provitola with a beautiful move. What a drive to the basket. Putting the head and shoulder fake, getting away from his defender. Well, this is a tough Watch situation right here. here because look, 
He can't come over and help because once he steps over, that's going to be a wide open Luis Scola. And that's down to Vargas. Vargas has got to play better man to man defense. Well, he pushed him from the back. La Provitola, three point play completed. And the Argentine coach, Sergio Hernandez, not even making a move to bring back Campasso in the game. La Provitola doing a good job playing the point guard position. Less than four minutes to go in this contest. Colmenares over to Vargas. Here's the outside shot. Not there, Deck with a rebound. Deck has been consistent all game long. Offensively, defensively, getting the boards, playing tough defense. And here's Luis Scola, fouled by Dwight Lewis. I don't know if Luis Scola does yoga, but he's just able to keep his composure so cool and level-headed all the time. And Venezuela in the penalty. Luis Scola at the line, and Deck will be replaced, heading back to the bench. Galisi checking in for the first time for Argentina to replace Deck. Luis Scola. Another three free throw for him. Looking to make it a 21 point lead for Argentina with 3.33 to go. Here's another three, uh, another free throw. You know, it's been a clinical execution. A clinical demolition of Argentina. Well, no doubt about it, but this has been the story of most of these players' lives. I mean, these two teams, some of the players very similar age, met each other at youth-level competitions internationally, met in Liga de las Americas, and now again at the world stage. Venezuela, they had an opportunity tonight to come here and prove a point. But I tell you what, Argentina maintained that they're still a world titan of basketball. La Provitola giving it over to the man who just checked in, Galici. And he was foiled. He was looking to score on a dunk. Well, I'll tell you what, he was about to put Nesta Colmenares on a poster. You can see right here, spins out, goes baseline, and he's very lucky. Well, it was Luis Bethany, who just saved himself, becoming famous for a monster dunk all over social media. Here's Galici. Did not play in the first half. Did not play in the third quarter either. Mr. Horacio Muratore. The former FIBA president. What a glorious term it was for Mr. Muratore as FIBA president. We well, talked about the term, and again, I've got to give him a lot of credit because it's his foundation, his vision to make basketball for everyone across the road, not just for the elite. Everybody has the right to play at this level. And now relievers checking in for Argentina to finish off the game. You've got Redivo. Playing the point guard position. And you know the nice thing about it is that Coach Sergio Hernandez has kept Luis Cola in the basketball game. So he wants the young guns to learn from the veteran on the floor. What a great move here on the part of Sergio Hernandez, the Argentine coach. Well, no doubt about it, just what you said. I mean, probably these players like La Provitola, not to mention even Gabriel Deck for that matter, we're probably watching Luis Scola dominate in the NBA when they were wearing diapers. <laughs> Vargas on the attack, going under the basket without taking a shot. Ten seconds of the shot clock for Venezuela, Dwight Lewis. And he was fouled. Might be in the act of shooting. Yes. Two free throws coming up here for Dwight Lewis. Lewis born in Louisiana, standing 6'6", 198 centimeters. Played four years of college ball in the US NCAA at the University of Southern California. And he's been playing in the Venezuelan league since 2010. And he's one of eight players on this Venezuelan team who played in the 2016 Olympics for Venezuela. Dwight Lewis is his name. Approaching the last two minute mark here in this basketball game. La Provitola with the ball. And 
then that ball deflected. It's stolen by Venezuela. Venezuela on the attack and Vargas. He missed, but he was fouled. He was fouled going up. Well, Vargas want to go in there with his right hand so he can make the contact, but really he had enough time and space to finish it with his left, but he's going to go to the free throw line now for two shots. Fiera Rupp of Argentina also in the game, along with Red Evo. And Galici, so three young guns on the floor here for Argentina to combine with Scola and La, La Provitola. Vargas with a free throw. You see that much time remaining in the game. Argentina with a masterful performance. Chris passing, good shooting, domination of the boards. And we did say a clinical demolition by Argentina of Venezuela. La Provitola looking to run the pick and roll with Scola. Now it's Scola. Passing it back to La Provitola. Back to Scola. And Scola. He will miss, but he will go to the line. Fouled in the act of shooting. Well, Luis Scola just does such a good job because he had the ball, and I wasn't too sure if he was going to get the shot off or he was aware, but in the end, stepped through with a pivot, went up with his right foot, right hand, sorry, and now he's going to the free throw line for two shots. Luis Scola at the line. For the game, he's got 13 points. He's not missing from the free throw line. Scola. This past season in the China League, averaged 19.9 points, 9.7 rebounds for the Shanghai Sharks. He's making two out of two, and he leaves the game on a high note. And he's replaced by Agustin Cafaro of Argentina. You see Sergio Hernandez and Luis Cola congratulating each other. Almost a steal there by Fila Rook. Vargas still has possession. Six seconds on the shot clock. There's a long attempt by Bethelby, and then the foul inside. Score the basket. A long night here for Colmenares. Watch it right here. Here's the miss. And then the big offensive rebound by Colmenares. And then the two points on the putback. I just start to wonder now if Nesta Colmenares had been a factor in this game early on. Could have been different for Venezuela, but credit that down to Argentina's defense. They've just frustrated him like hell tonight. Colmenares, one of the veterans of this Venezuelan team, 32 years old. But that matchup against Luis Cola, just a little bit too much for Colmenares in this contest. Less than a minute to go. La Provitola still in the basketball game, playing the point guard position. Over to Radivo, and then to Cafaro. Radivo, putting the ball on the floor. Still with Radivo. Oh, look at that move. Getting away from Colmenares, but missing the shot. But here's Radivo again. Missing offensive rebound. Well, there's there definitely some contact on the first shot now as Gregory Vargas turns it over. Radivo well, with the steal. Could be having an alley right now. Oh, easy two points, but Vargas with a foul. And Cafaro will be at the line. You watch that steal from behind. Or rather the deflection and the steal by Radivo, and then the pass. And Cafaro. With a shot, he'll be at the line for a three-point play. Well, the officials, I think, need to review the play, possibly to see if it's an unsportsmanlike foul. Let's listen into what the referees had to say. Yeah. 
We will remain with the personal foul. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I would have personally thought that when Vargas went to block and made no attempt to play the ball, but they've gone with an ordinary foul there. Now, Vargas, why he did that was he was frustrated where he thought he got fouled down there with a reach in. But 21 seconds ago, Argentina looked like they're going to be setting their ways onto the quarterfinal with this victory, possibly. And there's the completion of the three point play by Cafaro. That's right, they ruled the regular foul against Vargas. It was not upgraded to an unsportsmanlike foul. Here's the outside shot by the other Vargas. You got two Vargas brothers playing here for Venezuela. And ball will stay with Argentina. Fiela Rup with the inbound. Over to Cafaro. And now it's La Provitola, and that's the end of the ball game. An even 20 point advantage for Argentina. A masterful performance. And Argentina remaining unblemished with a record. 4 0 now. Well, what a game it was between these two. But again, Argentina, as you mentioned, just showing their supremacy on the world stage. Venezuela, a lot to learn if they're going to compete at this level. Venezuela dropping down to 2 and 2. Argentina moving up to 4 and 0. And tying Poland for number one in this second round bracket in Foshan, Poland also at 4-0 after defeating Russia in the first game of today's doubleheader. And Argentina, great performance, getting a lot of contributions from different players, but Gabriel Deck, what a mammoth game from him, 25 big points. Four players in double figures for Argentina. And the Argentine fans, oh, they are enjoying this. Well, the Argentine fans, again, you can always hear them everywhere. Passionate basketball fans, and we'll look what it means to them. They've won the Olympics before, and now they want to win it here at the world stage. They've also won the World Cup once before, when they hosted the very first ever World Cup in 1950. Argentina winning the World Cup 69 years ago. And then the Venezuelan team, nothing to be ashamed of. They put up a good fight. Colmenares struggled in this game. You see Chorio. And then the Chinese fans showing their appreciation. And take a look at the two-point performance by Argentina. 70% shooting. And then the assist, 25 to 15 over Venezuela. We did say it was a complete performance by Argentina. As we, as we mentioned, Jack finishing with 25 points and Scola 15 points. Campaso with 12. Carrera had 19 points to lead the way for Venezuela. Been an exciting two games here to start the second round hostilities in Foshan. As you see, Luis Scola and then La Provitola with a beautiful pass inside for Gabriel Deck, who finished with 25 points in this one. The Argentinian fans loving it. They're here to support their beloved national team. And that's Garino getting away for the easy layup. A lot of crisp passing. In total, 25 assists by Argentina. And then the movement around the perimeter for Venezuela. Argentine coach Sergio Hernandez. Another easy two points right there for Gabriel Deck, hitting it high off the window. And more crisp passing here, Gabriel Deck finding the open three-point shooter. Campasso ringing the bell and drawing the cheers from the Argentine fans. Here's the move by Churio, a spin move, and then the connection. Fernando Duro, the Argentine coach of Venezuela, and then a beautiful move by La Provitola. Watch it here again. And then Vargas with a push from behind. Called for the foul. La Provitola 
with a layup and he'll go to the line for a three-point play. And here was that deflection from behind. And then the shot right there by Cafaro. And he'll go to the line also for his own three-point play. Excellent performance here by Argentina and Luis Scola. Finishing with 15 points and three fouls. A beautiful game by Argentina. Winning it over Venezuela, 87 to 67. And that's our leaderboard right now, Argentina and Poland. They will play tomorrow to determine who will remain unbeaten, Russia and Venezuela. They will also play off tomorrow to find out who will go ahead. It's been an exciting day of basketball. It's the 2019 FIBA World Cup. It's a World Cup game. Thank you very much for watching.